Hello folks, it's Richard again, it's the uh, next part of my electric car project. Uh, trying to convert this Rover 214 into fully electric power. Um, it's been a few weeks since I've done any, any video in. I've been a little bit busy on this and uh, a other things, but here goes. Um, a couple weeks ago I managed to obtain eight Trojan batteries, deep cycle batteries. Uh, 105 and power for, for, for a fantastic price. I mean, barely to say how much. Um, but I've got eight of these. The intention is to use um, seven of them now. So I'm, I'm looking at getting 84 volts um, to run the control gear. Uh, I've just put the battery box in, which is the, the battery box for the original battery you see sitting here. So you can see the sort of uh, restrictions I've got on space. So I can maybe have a go at trying to make this. Um, a bit lighter to do away the ECU boat on the side here, so I'm not worried about that. Um, but you can see already uh, quite a bit of space has gone around the front beyond the radiator. Uh, obviously, I've got a little bit of space left at the front here to try and put the control panels, which I've now got in here out of the uh, old forklift. Uh, they are quite large, so they probably will fill up this space here. Uh, I've got to go through and try and work out which parts I need, which parts I don't. Still a bit of a mystery at the moment as to how it all works, but that's going to be one of my next projects. Uh, if I lift out the battery box that I've just set in at the moment, um, what I've done because uh, obviously I wanted to mount these in here out of the way, um, there's a piece of metal that I welded on the behind the radiator here, and also a piece that I welded on the front beam here. This box section down here, because uh, these two are at different heights, which is just to try and get them both in as different height, uh, at the same height. I melded a, a small piece on the front and a bigger piece on the on the, on the the back here. Uh, this has allowed me to fit um, one of these battery trays with an appropriate bit of studding and obviously a bracket on the top. And likewise, I've done the same over here, so if ever I need to take the front beam out, um, I can obviously take the trays out uh, and then separate the car, whereas obviously welding is in permanently or we may do that. I've uh, made some clamps up so I can still get the covers off to check and top up the battery cells however frequently I have to do that in the end. Uh, so there's two of the batteries. Um, the other thing I've been up to um, say the last couple of weekends is starting on a rear battery box. Um, what I originally did when I first bought um, all eight batteries was I positioned the car back up on the driveway where I'd done my original measurements from the bottom of the wheel here to the top of the wheel arch all the way around when I had it with the uh, original petrol engine and all the equipment in. Um, put the batteries inside the car, put all the charges inside the car and me re-measured these, dis these uh, distances with the car in the same place. And it only seems to have gone down about uh, 10 millimetres. At the moment, the, um, the front of the car does look a little bit high, as you can probably see. There's a bit more of a gap at the front over there to what there is at the back. But it's just a few inches of movement when you um, bounce something down on the boot. So I'm hoping it's going to uh, be okay for daily use. Um, once I've done all that, I've set about doing the front boxes, which I've just shown you. And the other thing I've done is I've uh, been making up my rear battery box. Uh, lucky enough, it all sits at the moment under the parcel shelf. If I take these tags off here, that's how it will appear normally. Um, so it all tucks in underneath the shelf. Uh, with a little bit of space there at the moment. I just pull this parcel shelf out. Alright, what we've got is these are the chargers that I pointed out in a previous video that I got hold of. Uh, 12 amp chargers from RAC. Um, already started using them just to keep these batteries uh, conditioned at the moment. As you can see, it's a fair old, well, not, it's not so much for weight, but obviously it does take up a bit of space. Um, and although I could probably fit 7 or 8 on there, I'd rather not. So what I've done, I've taken one apart, and basically it's a front panel with the lights on, and the electronics board under here that should mount on its side. And what I'm hoping to do with this uh, bit of 
box frame I just made it here. I was going to use wood, but I decided the uh, steel was a bit more manly, so I've uh, gone with the steel. I hope to be able to mount all of them like that. Obviously, all eight of them along there, so uh, they'll be visible, obviously, just by lifting the bonnet, uh, the boot up, as we have done. Well, I'll move these out of the way. Right, what I've done, it's a little bit hard to see around here, um, but I've basically welded some studs to the floor down here, a 16mm piece of stud in there, a piece at the back here, down there, and another two over the other side. And they made a steel frame out of some uh, thicker angle iron, so I've got a, a base around the outside and four posts, and then made this wooden frame that sits inside the whole lot which uh, will be self-enclosed so that any gas is generated inside the box will stay inside the box hopefully and not get into the driver's compartment. Regarding gas, what I've done uh, as far as getting rid of any of the gases in here, uh, over the weekend I've got a piece of commodity tubing, I'll pull this one off, a piece of commodity tubing uh, which I've picked up, uh, an old uh, top of a, uh, a mixer tub for two stroke uh, motor and uh, that basically goes into a you can see the hole I've cut down the bottom here there you go that goes down to the bottom so that hopefully will um, suck any fresh air in from outside the car and I've put one there the other side designed to suck any gas generated inside the battery box doing charging out um, as far as fans if I just lift off this top cover this will be hinged eventually these is my other five batches so that would be seven in total as I said earlier on um, made up some basic clamps again just to hold these down there's a uh, metal rods going underneath the battery box a long way like this with this, without a bit of studding through the bottom so I can take this off uh, without having to go under these to uh, hold another spanner and basically it just holds up the batteries down to the bottom of the box which is welded to the steel frame uh, all the way along uh, another one across here again I've done it on it so I can take the tops off for checking and topping and uh, a few pieces of wood at the bottom to stop that battery going sideways and this one going sideways and likewise over this side uh, these fans that I've mentioned earlier on this one's designed to suck in uh, fresh air all this is a fan I picked up from Matt Prince, a local um, computer type store for about £8 each. And there's another one over here. Uh, this is 12 volt DC. Uh, idea being, um, as you probably spotted, my, as my large adapter that I'm going to use to run all my chargers. There's eight plugs on here, uh, seven chargers, probably, maybe eight. But I'll also be running another 12 volt little supply. Possibly off one of the charger plugs, possibly not. But I'll just run these. These are incredibly quiet. Um, might be able to just wire one up here to let you, let you hear. You'll barely hear it if it's all. So it's actually running now. That one there. Pulled the wire off, and there you go, it stopped again. So. got a gentle breeze going into it. I don't want to cool the batteries too much. Obviously, in effect, their performance. Uh, that should hopefully keep any gases away. Nice to have a seal around the box. Around the outside. A couple of clips holding it down. Should hopefully do the job. I'm just going for a hinge at the moment. Had a bit of an issue doing my measuring. Um, didn't realise that the battery would actually hit the seat. I had to bring it forward a little bit. So I sorted that out now as well. So that's a bit of progression now. Um, I've also... Removed now the clutch pedal and the accelerate pedal. Uh, this is the forklift pedal. It's got quite, quite a strong spring on it, which I'm going to be changing over, probably to make it a bit weaker. Just trying to change that spring there. The idea being, it was originally mounted like that. I'm going to try and turn it around so it's like that now. And just fabricate a bracket to hold that to the front of the car. So things are uh, steaming ahead now. Uh, hopefully, do another video once I get the rest of this box sorted out. Um, and then get something to help me work out how to put some power into it. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.